Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, The Bee Whisperer. Yesterday was the first of my in-person classes here at the farm, and it went really, really well. We had a fantastic day weather-wise. Um, we did a couple of uh, four hours or so in the classroom, and then after lunch break, we went out to uh, visit the bees. Uh, we had a, a really good time there. Um, the, we've got a few uh, clips here of some of the class, uh, just the introduction uh, some, and going out to the bees. Unfortunately, it was really, really windy. Um, one of my students was very kind enough to uh, do the shooting of uh, some video for me, so that was really, really helpful. Um, I apologize for the sound quality because I don't have one of those uh, fur covered microphones. Uh, my phone doesn't really take a that um, uh, external microphone yet, so I really have to upscale, upgrade my equipment for these sort of conditions. It works okay in a poor, uh, low wind, but in a high wind situation, it was just terrible. So forgive me a few. Um, I've edited out as much of the wind noise as I could, so but there'd be a few quiet spots in the video. Uh, you may struggle to have the hearing uh, to hear what I'm saying there, so it wasn't really intended to be a full-length video. But I thought, what the heck, show you what what goes on in a class like that, and um, bear with me with the with the sound there. Um, if you are enjoying these videos, please press subscribe. Uh, let your friends know about it. Uh, I hope to do more and more videos for re requests and things for videos and do more um, subjects that will you'll find useful, particularly for beginners. Um, as for the classes that I'm doing, I probably, I've got only one or two places left. I've got to decide at this uh, very soon whether I'm going to run more classes. I've got four classes scheduled this spring and all four are just about sold out now. Um, unless I'm able to increase the number of people that are coming in because COVID restrictions get reduced. Uh, I may very well increase the number of classes. I'll certainly be running some intermediate classes a little later on, in, uh, probably in June. And uh, once the decision has been made on dates for those, I'll let people know. So if you are interested, get in touch with me on Facebook or email and, um, or by phone and uh, let me know if you see if there's a space available for you. Okay, so um, I hope you enjoy it. Again, please press that subscribe button and uh, let me know what you think. I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. See you next time. Okay, so uh, welcome. I uh, just said the bathroom's here. We can have a, about two hours first, uh, then a coffee break, then another two hours for the lunch break, and then go into the bees. So, uh, welcome to my farm. Right uh, in this um, property right now, I've got about 30, no, 26 colonies, 27 colonies. Uh, I overwintered a bit over 40 colonies. Uh, a bit about my background. I was a typical hobbyist beekeeper up until maybe 10 years ago. Uh, I had about half a dozen hives each year and then over time I got, got to be asked to do things like adult ed classes and so that really spurred me into start rereading the books I hadn't read in decades, mm -hmm. literally decades. And I started realizing all the things I've been doing wrong and with my beekeeping in the last few years mm -hmm. and how much better I could do it and that really started me having to brush up on what I was doing and why I was doing it so I could teach somebody really made a difference in terms of how I, how I uh, kept bees myself. And so from then it's just been uh, growing and growing. Um, I teamed up with the late great Harold Swan in Brewer, um, who was the sort of grandfather of beekeeping in Maine, and he had a beekeeping supply store. Uh, and I helped him with that for about five years before he scaled it down entirely, uh, just so we'd have a few visitors to talk about bees, and I started the beekeeping supply store and in my property, which I've since moved to this property. And so it's, uh, and then my beekeeping's gone from about six hives to 12 hives to 20 hives to 50 hives to 70 hives, now 130 something hives over this last winter. 
and each spring I'll get up to about 250 to 300 colonies as I make a lot of nucleus colonies for passing on to my customers. And the amount I've learned in the last few years of just making nucleus colonies and sort of on a semi-commercial scale producing beehives for people again it's just been a fantastic explosion of experience and knowledge that I've uh, really benefited from. Um, I've been doing those beekeeping classes for, as I say, for almost 10 years now and with the pandemic I had to totally change what I was doing because instead of meeting a lot of people that way I was finding a lot of people had questions but there wasn't a, a very organized system to get the information out so I started this, this winter started doing that uh, YouTube channel uh, Beekeeping with the Bee Whisperer and that's since really taken off as well so uh, sort of what I've been doing is uh, how many of you have seen that so far the Beekeeping with Bee Whisperer channel? I've seen it on I just haven't it. Right well that, I think what you'll find is that will be really good reinforcement for what you're doing in the class here because particularly the, the playlist which is about begin, beekeeping for beginners a lot of what you'll see here I'll go into a lot more detail there either with a beehive or just with some equipment going through it more and so we'll touch on it briefly here what we can do in four hours but those videos there's probably 50 to 100 hours of videos that you could potentially look at um, and pick and choose the, the bits that you want as, as you go but uh, what you'll find today is the most important thing, the lesson I'm going to teach you is about treat, um, monitoring and treating for mites. <coughs> Keep those parasites under control in the bees, and the bees will really, to a very large extent, look after themselves. We can do a lot by helping them with fine tuning, like insulating them for the winter and choosing the right race of bee, and swarm prevention, that sort of thing, but that's really fine tuning. The, biggest single thing the bees need us for, apart from buying them a beehive, is to actually keep the mites under control because they have a lot of difficulty with that. And if we do, the bees do very well. Until I really learned to uh, keep mites under control, my survivorship was very much like the national average. In the last 10 to, 5, 10 to 15 years, we've been losing 40% of bee colonies nationwide every year. Um, forty percent, so not almost half the bees not making it, mostly in the winter time. In the last three years, I've averaged about eighty-five to ninety-two percent survivorship. Wow. So we should be lo losing eight to fifteen percent. Uh, so, if you adopt some of those techniques, particularly mite treatments, but some of the other fine tunings, you should be get your bees through the year through the winter most times. hives were, if you saw some of my videos, you may have seen hives that I had on, on top of other hives for the winter time. Like this one is one left over and one over there. And others are two-story hives or single-story hives that have come through the winter. And some of them are ready for expansion and some are not. Are we, is this actually, we are rolling. Thank oh, yeah. you. Okay. I'm on it. Great, thank you. It was a single colony a single deep over the winter it was it had about a few weeks ago had two frames of brood in here and last time I looked at last week it had about three frames of brood be aware that electric fence even though it's on the ground could still give you a zap yep. <laughs> no. so, a little bit of smoke that's just enough to change the signal inside layout 
here which is a little bit different from normal. I use this sort of foil wrap to keep the bees compressed down there so they're not wasting time building up in here like we mentioned before. So I'll use this as a way to prevent that yep. when I still want to use the rim. So this is like a little improvisation. But for the beginner's class I don't normally do that because this is too many too many options is not not useful. Put the smoker. Oh, burn my butt on it. Okay. So by the look of things here, we've got bees on one, two, three, four, five frames, possibly going onto the inside of this one and possibly going onto the inside of that one. This is what's left of a little bit of pollen patty, which I was feeding them, which is pretty much used up. And there's some comb which I'll just put in there. It's nice and tidy. There's no bees in here, so it's nice and easy to take one of these frames out. They haven't expanded back into here yet. But what they've got is lots of honey. It's still uneaten from the winter, and this is fresher. See how wet it looks? Yeah. They've been adding stuff, even though some of this is crystallized in here. They've been adding nectar on top of this. So this is a, a longer term food source. You see how shiny it looks? That's a sign that it's freshly put in there. <clears throat> Everything is glued in still. Lots of nectar there. And more here with the capped honey from the fall. Plenty of honey. This hive came through the winter with an enormous amount of food still. Yeah. Uh, considering it was a whole, it, the whole hive had just this one box full of food. Now we're going to start to get into the edge of the brood chamber, which is normally surrounded by pollen. Would you be more yellow? Yep. Okay. So this side is still honey, but I'll yep, bet we see yep. pollen on this side. I'll see how yellow that looks. And what we have here is still some honey. See the honey in there? Yep. But all this yellow is pollen and nice shiny new nectar being brought in. See the pollens of different colors, bright orange there, a lighter yellow, so different species like dandelions and willows and that sort of thing coming to play there. See how calm the bees are? Yeah. I haven't seen the Anybody queen nervous yet? yet? Nope. We haven't uh, seen the queen yet. No, we haven't seen the queen yet. You're very unlikely to find the queen on frames full of honey. Like Boy, this. this one's dug right down in, huh? Yeah, they got their face in there. They smell the smoke, so they're sort of drinking up some honey right now, just in case things go go wrong. So you said you're very like you're not likely to find the queen on a frame. That's yeah, so so frames that have very few bees on, you're not likely to find the big queen. Frames that are just full of food, you're not likely to find the queen. She's saves you, that really increases your chances of finding the queen. Sure. Now, what we see here is those sort of coffee colored capped brood, lots of capped brood here. You see that? Oh. Compared to honey here, oh, yeah. yellow as opposed to a light coffee color. This is all capped brood, which will be emerging pretty soon. Now again, we're less likely to find the queen on a frame like this because there's only spaces around the edge that she might be able to lay because this is still pretty solid with capped brood. Now on this side, the queen is on this side and we're going to see who finds her first. A little hard with the shadows on there. Right there. Okay. Yeah. Where? She's on right there. here. See how long she is? Oh my gosh. Now she is still relatively small. She may yet get a little bit bigger. She's long and narrow, 
So she's a very lean looking queen, but she's doing a great job keeping this comb filled with brood. She's looking, see how there's a lot of empty cells here? Yep. She's going around looking at where these bees have been emerging, because these she filled up with three weeks ago, and they're coming out now. Right, where did she go? She's just up here now. Okay. Oh, yep. If I blow a little bit of smoke, we'll probably get a few of the bees to retreat. I don't want the queen to retreat too much. Oh, wow. Yep, right up near the She's going to head up over there, yeah. And so you see how lots of these bees have emerged here. And she's looking for empty spaces to refill them with eggs. Now, how does she uh, put the egg in? She will actually stick her butt down into the bottom of the cell. So she'll look into the cell, see that it's ready to lay in. When okay. she's satisfied that it's ready to go, she'll back up into the cell. Where did she go now? She's right by the Oh, yeah. So I what she'd she do is she would go in, go in there, one. she'll sort of arch her back and then stick her abdomen right down into the cell and lay the egg right at the bottom of the cell. Be. Just looking to see if I see any coming out here. Then. Not yet. After a while, you oh, get a right there. Is that one that's going to be coming out? This, this one is sticking no, up. High? I don't think so. Oh, no, that's okay. a drone cell amongst the worker cells. Oh. Okay, After a while, you can start to look through the bees and see what's going on underneath them. But uh, another way of doing this is to do this. Emerging going on right now. The one that they would be most of them would be along this line here, along the edge. So this, this is they're the older ones, right? Exactly. They're at just the stage where the ones before them have already emerged and the ones after them are well, still sealed. The, the, the cell itself is poking up, you know, the, the top of it. Yeah, yep. that's a drone because there's a male. Yeah, but I mean, when you say they're emerging, it's because they're. The, you'll you'll see as the they're actually. No, nope, you'll actually see them chewing away. And you'll see the face sticking through the cell. Oh, no kidding? Yeah. Oh, okay. We'll probably find them. <coughs> I'm sure we'll see them. The other edge of the roof chamber. And we're back into pollen here. So it's oh, yeah, all filled shiny. with pollen and honey here. So this is the outer wall of the brood chamber. And I'll lift that frame out with the larvae in it that you were trying to see before. White cells there. The ones with the white in it are sort of eight day old larvae, almost ready to pupate. How many bees do you think are in this one? In this hive, I would say we've got about 15,000. the 
powder and then mix it up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I make my own pollen patch instead. In fact, I mix a couple of different powders with it to make it a broader spectrum. Now, looking at the top here, looks like we've got bees in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seams this time. So maybe slightly bigger than that one. So over here. Again, we can approach it from this side. There's next to nothing going on here, so I'm less likely to do any damage by taking out this frame first. If you take a frame full of bees straight out, you can kind of roll the queen. If she happens to be on that frame or the frame next to it, you might hurt the queen. So it's always a good idea to start at the outer edge. And I also find it much easier to start at the edge nearer myself, as opposed to reaching across the hive. A little bit of honey here. Full of honey. Again, full of honey. This probably weighs about six or seven pounds of honey. So I might move that to the other side of the hive here because the hive is a little bit pushed that way. So I may put some of the honey over there. Still all honey on this side. And we're into the edge of the brood chamber on this side. So we've got pollen here. So lots of stored pollen. Yeah. Food resources here and then the honey there. Again, the queen's not likely to be there. I always find it easier with the sun on my back, but because of the way I've got the bees laid out here, I've got to deal with it with the sun coming this way. So there's a little bit of glare. But you folks might get a better view that way. Lovely frame of capped brood. Yep. So mostly covered with capped brood, a little bit of honey around the edges and pollen all around between the honey and the brood. So pollen all the way around. That honey. So a nice sort of bullseye pattern. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See that this bee is very newly emerged, this little silvery one, this one here. Oh yeah. They're all newly They're emerged fuzzy. bees. Hmm. Now we probably have the area where a lot of bees are emerging because we can see there's a gap in the middle here. So cap brood here so with pollen in between. Kind of hard to see the eggs, especially with the sun not behind these, me. These have got their heads right in there. Yep, they're drinking up the honey or processing the pollen there. You saw the queen? So you absolutely are. Good eye. Good eye. So you see how when she moves, she also kind of leaves a bit of a trail amongst the bees. There's a bit of a gap behind her. And bees sort of turn to face her where they can. And they're sort of picking up pheromones from her. Does everyone see the queen? That's right here. So as she moves across the frame, she sort of leaves a trail in her path. Most of the other bees are staying pretty much still just moving along, shuffling along a little bit. The queen is usually purposefully moving along the frame. She's also, her back tends to be hairless, whereas the worker bees tends to be a little bit fuzzy. So her back looks a little different, as well as her abdomen being longer. And she can be anything from bright orange to virtually black. To some extent, it, ex it depends on the race of bee, but not entirely. Okay, so we've got a nice healthy queen there, keeping nice frames of brood. So two hives, two queens, not too bad.
again. Nice little brood. I'm going to try and get the sun behind me to I'll see if we can see eggs and things. Okay, in this corner, this area here, I'm going to shake the bees off so it makes it even easier to see. In this area here, it's very clear to see eggs. So I'll pass this around a little bit. Or if you bees in here are the ones that have survived the winter. Yeah. They're dying off now. The bees that are emerging now are maybe 10, 20% smaller than those overwintered bees. So you can actually physically see the difference in size. So the smaller bees are spring and summer bees. Okay, I was gonna put a frame of honey on the outside edge here, so I'll just move one across. Now, looking here, I can see bees in one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven frames. Not so much over here, but the best way to tell how big the cluster is is to look from underneath. So, we'll do that. This upper super is all it's coming apart, so I have to be careful. Quite a bit of honey in it. Side. Not yet, not yet. Okay. Still haven't pried it off enough yet. <laughs> See the frames, the bottom of these frames will be stuck to the tops of those. They do as a well. pretty good job of going them. Oh yeah. There we go. Now things are happening. Now, if you come around this side, you see this is, this is not a big, particularly strong colony. It got through the winter okay. They're starting to. But I can see bees in one, two, three, four, five seams here, compared to seven up top. This is a better indication of how strong this cluster is. So this tells me that this is not ready to reverse the brood chambers. You know, we spoke about how, yep. how empty space in here. Now, mind you, having a look at it, there's a lot more bees in here than we gave it credit for to start with. Look at all the bees popping up here now. But I'm not going to reverse the brood chambers because... I don't see any urgent need. They've got room both here and here. So I'll just leave them alone. So that means that they're not in this lower section and there must be a lot of It's honey actually still. full of honey, that's why they're yep. not in there. Right, that's what I was thinking. Too. Also if you notice here, these are queen cups. This one and this one. This is the precursor to queen cells. Mm -hmm. But you'll always have queen cups from spring to fall. And if they were without forcing them around. So. The reason I don't have it in a cover here and set it up normally is because I just, as soon as I took the nukes off the other day, I just put this back on. I said, I'll, I'll get that sorted out later. So this is like an improvised inner cover. You can see with a lot of this equipment, you can improvise with a lot of different things. It's not going to really be much hard. Now, this looks nice and full of bees. It's full of bees, wall to wall up here. They're not necessarily all over the tops, but they are in between. So, to an untrained eye, it might feel, well, it's just another box of bees. But to me, these are much more evenly distributed compared to that hive, which were sort of a little bit clustered. So, the first thing we'll do is to look to see what it's like underneath. Yeah, they seem very docile. It's nice, isn't it? And also, if you do this, they're not jumping up at my hand. Yeah. But there are very few of them. A lot of folks say Saskatraz bees are meaner. And I think those are folks that uh, want to sell other types of bees. <laughs> I have not encountered the Saskatraz bee any different aggression wise. Great reputation for being gentle. See the bees coming out here? Oh, it's stuck in there. Right? Yeah. Do you have any science or thought behind the colors you paint your bee boxes or is it just whatever? Nope. Whatever you feel like. Yep. <laughs> whatever, 
whatever, I, whatever I grabbed hold of paint wise. Oh, is there a frame coming up? There we go. Oh, there Again, that is full of honey. Holy cow, look at that. Yeah, that's Okay, when we talked about <laughs> shadow. Okay. Now you see the drone brood here. Now this is still relatively full of honey, but the bees come all the way down through all of these. Maybe with the exception of down here, these frames are full of bees too. So this hive is good and strong. This is gonna be a prime candidate to put another box on. I'm gonna use a bit of smoke so we can expose these larvae. Actually, if you don't mind, you can take your hand off there. Cool. Right there. Right there. If you come around to this side, we'll have more light on the hive. In fact, I'm gonna move this. to 50 pounds of honey in there. That's why the bees are down in here so enthusiastically. This is what's left of the mite tree, as is that. This is the a bit of uh, Formic Pro. Take that off. That's what that is? Yeah, that's the remnants of the Formic Pro pack. What's in the hop guard? A hops extract. the smoke on there to try and expose those drone larvae to see if we could see any mites. So, got that out of the way. Just rolling over these drone larvae to see if we see any mites in them. Now, were you open to moving them around? Is that a problem? Oh, they're, they're, they've had it. When you've exposed them like this, they're, they're going to die. But we don't really mind losing a few drones. But I'm just checking to see if there's any signs that there's mites in them because sparks, right? mites will have preferentially gone into this type of larvae. And it'd be a good opportunity to show you a mite if we found any. But these bees will be, these larvae will be getting carted out of here within a few minutes. So I don't see any mites at all so far. Just a now it's only spot, about 10 right? or 12 larvae. But that's it's always good that you you don't see any mites in there. That's a, a promising sign. But this time of year, we don't expect many mites in the hive. Lower, because there's probably more brood in the lower. Just judging by the weight of the honey in the upper, I would say that there's so much honey in here. Got it. She's definitely got brood in this frame, this frame, this frame, this frame, and this frame. I can see the brood. But she may not have it all the way up to the top because there might be honey up there. Is that sort of coffee colored yes. wax on the cells? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, little guys. Yeah. yeah. You have to no, realize that you're going to kill bees in the process of <laughs> yeah. manipulating hives. Yeah. The more I can clean up after myself, the fewer critters and the fewer bit robbers, potential robbing and things. And also, the more wax I can reutilize. Yep. So now I know that this is going great. I'm sure we're going to have a quick look. I've moved this around a lot, but we'll have a quick look into a couple of these frames before I close it up and put another box on. It's full of honey. Wow. It's about seven pounds of honey there. Scratch the comb there, they'll fix that up. Chamber here. Look how solid that brood is. Definitely it. Yeah. She didn't miss a, hardly missed a cell here, and these ones are emerging quite quickly here. But a beautiful solid brood pattern. This is the top edge of that brood pattern, which we just cut in half. There's pollen on this side. I can see some eggs in the open cells. Still lots of honey. Backfilling the where the bees have been emerging, they're backfilling with pollen, so the queen is kind of running out of space here. So it will really benefit from adding an extra super on here. Is this all the honey they made last fall, or yeah. they have already started? The vast majority some? is honey they made this fall, 
but they do have some stuff that they did this spring. The stuff that looks wet and shiny in the cells, that's all fresh this year. And there's not a lot coming in right now. And the bees love to keep everything nicely tightly together. So it already be up here, then she'll want to just keep going. Then she'll just keep going. Because it'll all be nice and warm up here very quickly with all that heat coming up and warming up all this. So we've got some brood here. They're going to be right up into. Okay, now we'll close them. Put the insulation right on it now. In this particular case, I will because I don't have a inner cover or something like that for the insulation. But right through it. Come back to that. Let's see how they look underneath. Oh honey. That. One, two, three, four, five frames of bees, maybe six, probably five. So things look promising. They're right down to the bottom here. Probably mostly honey underneath on the other side there, judging by the weight. But there should be plenty of brood here. Okay. Now let's look for the queen. I should be on that side, but you guys can all help me find it. Who is it? Who is the guy? mold yeah dead bees and stuff yeah. they'll clean that up this had mold here but they're cleaning this all right up so this bottom corner had got a bit damp yeah. and so they're cleaning this and they'll be brewed in here in no time they're already putting honey and nectar and pollen in there you see the colors Mostly honey, a bit of fresh nectar coming in. Lots of honey. Unlikely to find the queen in a frame like this, so I'll move through it relatively quickly. Of course, it's always the hives that you want to find the queen in that yeah. you're going to struggle to find her in. That's where she's going to be in the odd places. But we've got pollen in here. I don't see brood on this side of the frame. There. We could have brood in the middle there, but I'm not sure. There's a little bit of open space, so we'll look for the queen a bit here. And we have plenty of brood on the next frame, I can see. lighter so I know there's not much honey on it. Lots of cat brood, lovely. Some younger brood around it, which is great. Be emerging right here. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep, here it comes. See that little silvery head sticking out? Oh, yeah. oh wow. Mm. Yeah. Is it up a bit 
tire. Thank you for showing us that one. I haven't seen that before. Okay, let's just check to see if the queen's on here before we shake bees off to see more emerging brood. But there's more emerging brood here. What's on that one right there on the side of it? Is that That's pollen. Oh. Pollen on her legs. Silvery head coming out there. Yeah. Oh my word, just coming right up. Just looking for more. This one has just emerged here. See how gentle the bees are? I'm pushing them around. Oh, look, this one's coming right out right now. Yep. Almost all the way out. Come on, girl, you can do it. <laughs> A couple more pushes, you'll be all set. Oh, my word. Yeah. And there yeah. she is. Yep. Okay, so she'll be the same color as the other bees in a, in a couple of hours. This one's just come out. This one's pretty fresh. Some bees start, starting to come out here. Yep, yep. See that? Little flaps moving. Yep. Okay, dark. getting back to finding our queen. Right, it's real dark. That's when it's close to opening up. Lots of drum brood at the bottom of the cell. Well, the bottom of the frame. Yes, right in the middle. Bang right in the middle. Oh, yeah, there she goes. There she is here. Yep. So how do we check for mites on her? Okay, we don't check for mites on her. We check for frames that she is not on. Not so on. we're going to look at one of the other frames here. So just for now, what we're going to do is, if you see the white tub over there, yep. if someone could bring that over here, please, and just yep. put this here. There's actually a mark in there to say how much to put in, but I'm going to put about an inch in there. So you don't have to be exact. Screen, no. Not putting this too close to the smoker. The other thing we're going to want... <coughs> and then a half, half cup is 300 bees. So we've got that ready to go. So what we're going to do, and this is ready to go. Now we've got a white tub here. I'll just do it over the top here. We know we've got a lot of emerging brood here. Oh, Our yes, brand new bee. That's yep. a perfect spot. She might, she might end up in, the, in this sample. In fact, she will. Or she'll be one of the bees down here. So, we, first of all, we'll shake the bees off. And the older bees are going to fly, and they're going to go back here. Now, I haven't got that many bees here, but we've probably got enough. I'm pretty sure we've got enough. These are the younger bees. Also, you notice how it got wet when I did that? That's from fresh nectar coming into the hive. That stuff that splashed in there with the bees is fresh nectar. If you shake a brood frame and the liquid comes out, that's brand new nectar from that day. Okay, so our sample is ready to go. You can put that lid straight on here once I get the bees. So these are young bees who've not flown before. Friend there. 
palm, even though maybe we did. I'm going to put this dirty frame back in here, they're going to fix that right up. Just check she did not fall into the box. So she's in here. So while that, that's all safely tucked away there, I'm just going to close things up here. If you've seen what we want to see in here. And I would say there's probably one more frame of bees. So we're still at about three frames of bees are going on to a fourth frame, well, sorry, a brood in here. So this hive is coming along nicely. We're going to see now how they work in lights. Close this up. Thank you. Now, once this is all closed, then we're not doing any damage to the hive. Nothing's getting chilled or anything. Thank you. Up here, we just make sure that's down tight. Bees are all dead now. <laughs> and we do this for about a minute. This is where we find out just non alcohol tight these things are, it tends to drip a little bit. But any mites that are on these bees, remember we, we use the frame of young bees because we want to have the most recent bees to have emerged from the brood themselves. That will give us an idea of how many mites are in the brood itself. Now, having done this, one thing you want to notice with a hat like that, keep on pulling it down, especially when it's brand new. Pulling it down from that because it tends to slip up a little bit. Ah. So with time, it gradually, after a little while, it Got fits it. on nicely. Yep. But that's this way, if it, if it pops over there, then bees can start getting in, in the top. top. Okay, so we'll shake it for a roughly a minute here. And then we look in here, and we're looking for little red specks in here. And hopefully we see none. But I see, I see one that looks like it could be a mite, maybe two. Oh, maybe a little more. Okay. There's some little flakes here that might be mites. One, two, three, possibly as many as four. Thanks. 